Ta -da. Hello and welcome to Genius Tea Time with Susan Ruth. Thank you so much for being part of this. This is great. I'm really excited. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for asking me. I, I was saying on my social medias early, I will earlier that I will be the tea time of the genius. You could be the genius, I'll be the tea time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can all be Spill geniuses. <laughs> is, Spill the tea. What, what are you drinking today? What is your tea time beverage? Uh, when I first wake up, I do a mixture of a protein powder and a mushroom powder, mm. 10 different mushrooms. And I use cinnamon, the good kind that whose name starts with a C, I think I can't remember. The Ceylon? Whoever's probably yelling what that is. Huh? The Ceylon? Yeah, that one. And uh, sometimes I pour a little coffee into it, sometimes not. But I, I tried to wean myself off of coffee a while back, about a year ago. And and switch to that mushroomy stuff and it, it works really it works really well so that is great trying to remember the difference between affect and effect <laughs> i'm sure it can be both right generally it is. yes right all right um admitting somebody else in thank you may um so susan ruth in her own words began her career as a performing artist and songwriter in Seattle, Washington, where she garnered multiple performance and writing awards for her albums, How to Say Goodbye and Surfacing to Breathe. In 2006, she moved to Nashville, Tennessee and penned songs in multiple genres for artists Reba McIntyre, Lone Star, Erdem Kine, O'Shea and the United, among others. Um, 2014, she released her album, All I Ever Wanted Was Everything, which is beautiful. You Thanks. should listen to it. Um, her songs have been in featured in motion pictures, including Life on the Line and Afterlife, as well as on the TV series MTV Road Rules and Real World. In Classic. July of yeah, of course. In July of 2016, she founded the Human Interest Purpose Driven Award Winning Hey Human podcast. And it's since gained momentum and worldwide attention for its open-minded conversations, ranging in topics from science, tech, religion, art, economics, and politics to humanism, philosophy, gender, and race. Really super important right now. Susan is an accomplished abstract painter and her work is sought after by collectors. The majority of her paintings are commissions. She is self-taught, but also the third generation grandniece of painter Carl Guthers. Am I getting yes. that? Good years. All right. Notable member of the American symbolist movement of the late 19th century, whose works hang all over the world. She is also a sketch writer and screenwriter who wrote and directed her first short film. Hurrah! Congratulations. In February, this was the first and completed the Second City Conservatory program. Thank you so much for being here. Yay! That seems want... like a lot of stuff. It's so much stuff. So do you want to introduce, by the way, the Trevor Project, which is the organization we're sponsoring? Yes, that is correct. Uh, Trevor Project is a wonderful organization. They specifically help uh, young people with, who are in the LGBTQ plus uh, community. They help them because mental health is so important, uh, especially within those communities. Uh, somebody who is uh, in the LGBTQ plus family is four times likely to commit suicide as a youth. Suicide is already a big one for kids. Of course, it's surpassed by guns. But uh, so the Trevor Project works diligently to help support people and uh, make sure that they stick around because we need people. We need we need those folks to stick around. So it's so important. Yeah. And then what do you want to tell us all about today? You made my screen so big, so I, I know. I like look because we get to see you. <laughs> wow! Wow! Your beautiful face. Oh, Lordy! Uh, what should we talk about? What 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 do you usually cover on these sorts of things? I mean, come on. Oh, I want to mention really quick too. I started a, another show that's out there. It's called "Are We There Yet?" podcast show, and it's on YouTube, and it's a sex and relationship show that I do with my friend Mara Edelman. She is a sex. Um, uh, uh, we got sexologist type person and healthcare practitioner. So, yeah. Dang. Well, how are you enjoying yeah. that, by the way? Oh, it's fun. It's fun to talk about all the topics. Um, I think it's important, especially as sex education is getting yanked from so many education. places. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and I know that parents that are against sex education in schools 
say, oh, well, I want to be able to teach my kids myself. And, and I understand that. But unfortunately, statistically, we see that uh, if kids aren't taught this stuff in school, they really are lacking in their knowledge. And that lack of knowledge creates all sorts of issues between STDs and uh, unwanted pregnancies and all sorts of things. So I believe that it's an important conversation to have. Now, that being said, you have to be 18 and older, I believe, to watch that show on YouTube, but I'm not positive. <laughs> but we don't, I mean, we're not crazy, you know, on there or anything, although it gets a little interesting sometimes. What are some topics that you were most excited about in the last Oh my time? gosh, we've talked all right. about all sorts of fun things. We've talked about uh, BDSM and and toys and masturbation and the first time you ever have sex and how important boundaries are and establishing rules of conduct within a relationship and uh, everything in between, lots of stuff. I started with the real racy stuff there, but yeah, everything in between. Uh, Cause it's all out there. We've talked about fetishes and there's no shame. And there doesn't need to be. I mean, I think that that's the biggest consensual, thing. Re yeah, consensual, great, bring it on. Non-consensual, there's a problem. Consensual, great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do so you that's find just another little nugget in the in the yeah. yeah in the yeah. multi the multicolored uh, prism that is your life? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff. So, did do, do you find that I'm assuming that Hey Human was your first podcast? Yeah, it was. All right, and was that your first time with just sort of experience and wanting to go through that process and um, to talk yeah. to people in that way? I know that you've done that personally, but it's different. The impetus for that show was a feeling of hopelessness about humanity, and uh, I didn't, I didn't want to be part of that. I wanted to be part of the solution, and I had a really beautiful experience with some humans and and decided that I was going to be part of the, the change to help people, to facilitate people remembering who they are, and that we can come together and have conversation, and that we're all connected, and that there are lots and lots and lots of different kinds of humans in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's one of the more beautiful things you can do. I think so. I, oh. I mean, I know that with songwriting, you are used to, you're used to telling stories, and you've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. How, what was like the transition from songwriting into this? Well, I haven't stopped songwriting. So but yeah, I didn't I, figure. I would, yeah. But the tra I mean, whenever somebody says to me, wow, you do all these different things. There's so many things you do. I, I often say I'm a storyteller and that I am able to tell a story through all these different mediums, whether it's songwriting, whether it's in a conversation or listening to someone else's conversation or a painting or whatever it is, or even, even just writing something on Facebook or something, you know, that's, it's all storytelling in its own way. Um, and for me, it's didn't, I didn't even notice, let's put it that way. For me, it was all the same. It was Makes all the same. Sense. There was no, there was no dividing line, like, oh, I'm a songwriter, and now I'm a podcaster, and now I'm a painter, and now I'm this, and now I'm that. In fact, when I started writing film, so the first is the first film that I've uh, written and directed and produced. However, it's the third short film that I've written since I've come to town, to LA. Uh, and I didn't know how to do that, but I did know that I had spent a long, long time writing songs and songs were just movies shoved into three minutes. And so I figured what the hell. It's one of those things where, I don't, I don't really see a big difference. It makes sense. Yeah. No, no, they're all storytelling in a different way. But um, for example, the painting though, is a completely different format for storytelling. Sure. Do you find that you use like, I don't know, go into a different mindset for the different mediums? I would say painting is my most relaxing place, except for I do get a little intense with commissions because I'm worried that they won't like it. And so when mm -hmm. I set to paint a commission, I tend to paint two or three. And then I say, which one do you like best? Which, <laughs> and sometimes that works out and they, they're like all of them. But um, yeah, the painting, I don't have a story in mind. I really, this is gonna sound like I'm a pompous ass to throw myself in with uh, <laughs> the, this 
chiseling out of the David, but I really get that idea of Michelangelo saying, oh, he was in there the whole time. I just had to release him. And to me, when I paint, I have no idea. I don't do pre-sketch or, you know, a lot of people do um, little tester to see how they like things. And I think that's really cool, but I don't do that. I just go in and it's really more of a meditative space for me and something just shows up. And I'm, as I'm working, I think, oh, wow, that's, that's this thing. That's cool. That story is coming up. One of the more interesting experiences I had, and, and again, once you paint something, at least in, in my opinion, you have to let it go and let it be whatever it is to whomever, especially when you're an abstractist like myself, uh, that whomever is taking it in is they're entitled to their own story. Absolutely. Uh, they, not my story, but their story. So I had this experience once where I was painting along with musicians playing and we were out <sighs> at, a, at a, a vineyard and um it was so interesting because as I painted adults would come by and look at the painting and say things like oh I see war oh that seems angry or I see this or that and kids would go by and say oh, I see a unicorn or it, it looks so happy or I see a doggy and I thought wow well, gosh isn't that just sad how jaded adults are but it was really an interesting experience to way back in the beginning to realize that I don't get to tell in any of my work tell people how to feel about what I'm creating Ooh. that's a really interesting place to be because as the creator you kind of like that's my baby but it's not and I don't even really take claim to it in the first place I do believe in that idea that that the, the you're the conduit to get the to get the thing out I totally understand yeah I love that idea of the that, that genius is actually you don't have to feel bad less about this because genius is something that visits you yeah. if you are open to it. Yeah. You know, that the it's conduit. be the conduit yeah. you wish to see in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be the conduit pipe. But no, I mean, I think for a lot of people, when they think about the notion of success, right, they think there's a structure, there's a plan you've got to, have, you know, and for some people, that is how their wives work. But for a lot of people I know in the creative fields, that's not the way it actually works. Success is a tricky thing. That yeah. word, success. Isn't it? I mean, what does it mean? And we're... So different for everybody. It's so different for everyone. We're raised up to believe it looks like a particular thing. And I don't think that's fair because everyone's success is in a different place. And I remember once uh, like a year or two ago, I got my parents were picking me up from the airport when I was visiting home. And uh, my mother, first thing my mother says to me when I get in the car, she said, when do you think you'll be successful? <laughs> and I said, well, let's see. I've put out four records. I've painted hundreds of paintings. I've gotten songs on lots of artists and, you know, I've traveled all over to perform and, you know, I just wrote a movie this was before I'd written the one that I, I just wrote but it was just it was so fascinating to me I was like well, what does success mean to you mom what mm -hmm. does it look like to you because yeah um, I would think that a lot of people would think that everything I've done was pretty successful I think what she means is when will I be you know a millionaire or something like that but interesting it's not what drives me. It never was really. I think when I was younger, the idea of being famous, you know, you, when you're 20, you think, oh, that sounds great. Now I think how horrific that might be to have somebody following you around, making sure that your cellulite doesn't get too bad. You know, that sounds not so fun. But um, yeah. yeah, the thing about success is also weird that people move the goalposts for themselves and then they never really get to sit in their own accolade to say, well, I'm proud of myself. I did this thing. Look at look at what I did. And that can be tiny, it can be huge, but if we keep looking over there instead of looking right here, I don't know that we'll ever feel good really truly about what we've accomplished. Fucking just can I swear? I mean just oh, living, yeah. just Come living on. on this planet. Yeah. So you never do a damn thing in your whole life. Just navigating the world at large is fucking success. That is monumental in my opinion and i don't care from which walk of life you walk on you good job that's right because it's pretty nutty 
it's it is funny and it's oof, it's exhausting sometimes and it's joyous and it's you know it's all the stuff but if you if you're even taking a breath you know congrats success right you know? yeah there's just so much i mean what do you do to celebrate your successes a martini sometimes <laughs> Also delicious. <laughs> delicious things make a difference. I think yeah, anything I, delicious to you. Yeah. Um, what do I do to celebrate success? Um, I think I just try to feel it, you know, feel it in my belly. Yeah. Feel it on, on some level, because again, it just depends on what, what a person thinks success is. I, you know, I've had, performed a song and had people in the audience singing the words back that felt pretty good but even success is just being in the presence of another person and performing or having them look at you know success felt pretty good walking around a gallery and people looking at my art and not knowing it was me and just listening to what they had to say that felt pretty successful whether or not any of those paintings would ever get purchased didn't matter the point is is i made some stuff and somebody else is now looking at that. That's pretty cool. And you, you know what I mean? It's it's such a such a weird ethereal thing. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. And I keep I'm driven forward all the time, but I'm also I feel I feel lazy all the time. I get mad at myself, you know. I, I my brain moves very quickly and sometimes it just stops working, just stops. And I'll find myself staring at a wall for a few minutes and I'll sort of snap out of it. And uh, I'll think, okay, obviously I pushed my brain a little hard and now it needs a rest. And it's taking a life, taken a lifetime to remember that rest is okay and that I'm not doing something wrong. Wow. You know? Have you seen things from the nap ministry? From the who, what? The nap, nap ministry. As in nap? Yeah, as in naps. Check it no, out. Oh, but that sounds like a church I could get into. Right. <laughs> what is it? Um, but just that the idea, I mean, specifically, this is from women of color who, and who've been black women who've been dealing with uh, labor being forced upon them all the time and both literal and figurative, but that the idea that resting is regenerative and necessary and not only should you not feel ashamed of it, you should love this. This is part of what your body and your life and your mind need, or, or you can't be fruitful in any way. Like the Italians get that. <laughs> yeah. They know how to rest. And the Spanish, I suppose. Anyone that, I, I think America has this really bizarre idea of what we have to work ourselves to death and to be worthy. To be worthy of what? I mean, I'm I gotta say, I've been to parties where people are driving some, you know, hundred thousand dollar cars, but I love my little Scion that I've had since 2008. She's freaking awesome. I love my little toaster oven. She's the best. <laughs> and I, I don't want to buy into a world that tells me that I'm less than because I like that, that, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's a dangerous dangerous slippery slope isn't there a famous quote about uh comparison being yeah know, yeah it's just not good it doesn't help i feel like i'm running way off topic in 12 directions but it, it this stuff always makes me think of that um you know we get told who we're supposed to be how we're supposed to work what we're supposed to look like and the truth be told like, nobody gets to take you away from you you belong to you period i don't care who they are i don't care if they bore you not boring but bore you like baby but i don't yeah. care if they're your teachers or your uh workmates or your boss or or whatever it's we give up so much of our power in this life and I don't know if there's anything I can impart on someone it's keep your power, you know, claim it, reclaim it. And the only reason they took it from you in the first place is because deep down they're scared of you. Ooh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's sometimes that's a hard lesson to learn. I think so. No, I think so. But I also think there are certain things that are innate 
like if you know that you're a storyteller and you know this, I mean, there's stories are demanding to be told. I mean, do you ever have that where the work kind of requires you to do it? And, oh, absolutely. Uh, but again, I can be uh, feeling like I haven't done enough. I've got lists of things that I want to do and create. Um, but I get overwhelmed sometimes and then I don't do them and then I feel bad about it. So mm. for myself, just because I do feel this responsibility of if I am a conduit and, and not, I really do believe that, that I'm whatever that the faith, God, the universe, whatever that I'm channeling information. I think it all floats by and we get to pull it down. That's why, you know, you, you see three movies come out and they're the same movie, but they're written by totally different people who've never met each other or, you know, the bookshelves are filled with books of some of, you know, similar ideas, but sold a little bit differently. And I think, okay, those things are floating by. And if I don't grab them and I have grabbed them and pulled them down, but if I disrespect the thought from the universe and don't finish this, ah, which goes against kind of like that. Oh, the universe doesn't get to tell me who I am either, but uh -huh. I feel like where the universe is concerned or God or, or whatever you want to call it is like, it actually knows who we are and it wants us to rise to the occasion that it's the antithesis of the other stuff it actually is like oh honey you're a you know you got all of it you you know you you've you've got it all it's floating by you're grabbing it we trust you to to get it out uh don't you believe in yourself enough to do it you know it's that kind of feeling and i think why should i write a book for god who's gonna read that there's 50 billion in my house alone a gajillion books and then I think, wait a minute, in my house alone, there's a gajillion books. So why can't I write one? It's, it can, you know, you can twist it on yourself. Right. Yeah. You can do that. You can tell yourself different stories about that all the time. All the time. I'm like, yeah. ah. I don't even know if I answered your question. I sort of. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you're answering it. So it's, do you know always what to do? Of course not. You're never going to know exactly, but at least. I think you can be overwhelmed by too many quote unquote yes. good ideas as well. And then you don't do anything and that doesn't serve anyone either. Yeah. We move and be moved. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. But also deciding what things are calling to you at the time and with what your energy level is and what the rest of where you're at. True, true that. You know, yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm sure you've made, had to make some decisions about what things not to do. Um. I don't actually know the answer to that. I don't want, I don't know. I don't know any more what to do than I know what not to do. I don't know an answer of either of those things. Okay. I really, uh, I know I, I'm in the moment. I try not to future cast because it doesn't do me any good personally. Uh, I feel like I'm deeply aware that today could be my last day. Yeah. And so in that, I think I'm going to waste a whole lot of time if I worry about what's coming in a year. I certainly can't mm -hmm. do shit about what's already happened. No. Um, so I'm, I've gotten better over the years at not at, at really being in this moment, being here now, as Ram Dass would say. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> it does. I don't know the answer. Did we lose Doug? I know Doug was watching. No, he's not. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm just, I'm, it looks like we're also gaining people, but who knows what happens? <laughs> people will drop in and out. I don't know how any of this works. It I is appreciate old. everybody for watching. We ra ramble off and, and all no, that. No, but this is good. And it's like, well, what do you do if you're needing to, I don't know, inspire yourself to keep going? I have to kick my own ass to it, I suppose. Or sometimes it just is like, oh, today, today I'm going to do this thing. And then I just do it. Um, inspiration is such a funny. Yeah. I write down, no matter what, anytime I get an idea, I write it down, no matter what. Even if I think it's a stupid idea, which, you know, I write down stupid ideas a lot, but, or I, my own judgment. But I, I try to keep track of all the thoughts. I mean, my notes, 
section in my phone packed my notes on my computer packed send myself emails all that stuff and then you know when when i think i'm kind of on onto something i'll maybe collect up the, the datum and stick it in a folder um yeah but it's a good question i don't know the answer to that either but i'm not very helpful am i i I just kind of do it. Like when I feel like painting, I'll just go paint unless I have a commission. And then I know I have a plan of something that they want particular color, or maybe it's going to look like something else I've done. Every screenplay I've written so far, three, not a whole lot. Uh, I, one, I woke up from a dream and I thought, oh, I'm going to write this before I go to breakfast because it's right there. And I sat in three and a half hours later, it was done. And with this one that I just did, that it was, you know, wrote and then directed, um, same thing. I, I had this, this time I had a story that was in my head from about 11 years old. And I, I thought about it here and there. And then one day, just for whatever reason, I went, I'm gonna write this now. So I sat down. First, I kind of panicked, to be honest. I thought, what if, what if it's not my idea? I've had it for so long. So I deep dove, I did so much research to try and figure out if the story had been told, but I looked at every nook and cranny and when I, and I asked other people and all this stuff. And when I was sure that it really truly was my idea, then I sat down, I'm like, okay, let's do this. And I wrote it and it came out quite quickly because it was ready, you know? It's kind of like when you come across a book and you read a few pages and you're like, yeah, not really feeling it. And then you, you come across that same book a couple of years later and you pick it up and you devour it in one sitting and you think, what was my problem? <laughs> it's weird. Timing is everything. I think so. Timing so, is everything. I know people, there's a notion about the idea of jazz, that one of the things that you do is you practice and practice and practice until you can be in the moment, until you can actually let it just come the flow yeah the flow. I, I think a lot of what you're talking about is flow state and prepping yourself for flow state so if you're writing down all the ideas you're preparing yourself for that for those times when there are blocks every time i talk to kids who ask me about the creative world i i say to them the same thing basically it's that whenever you decide to do the thing that you're going to do whenever that happens you you know understand that every moment leading up to that created the moment that creates it you don't you, you know what i mean like don't fret about that stuff so much because we are a mosaic of every experience we've ever had and it's all informing us and and all of that will be used whether you're conscious of it or not it will all be used and I, I think that's true for anything. I don't know that it's only the creative world that that, no. you know, is in. Yeah, I think that's that's true everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do you, can you, I don't know, pick some favorite moments, some favorite recent moments that you've had in your creative life? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, when I made the record How to Say Goodbye, uh, it swept the Seattle Area Music Awards. That blew my mind uh i was up against huge acts you know like at the time it was pearl jam and soundgarden all these seattle uh bands and such and i don't know that was it was mind-boggling to win to win all those awards that was really neat and it as much as we like to think that awards don't matter they feel good when you're you know, they do feel good but um so that was cool i really really loved Getting into the Second City Conservatory felt really good. That was cool. Um, and I really enjoyed my time there. And honestly, I mean, I feel, I feel like I, extraordinarily lucky in that, I should preface this to say, I have dark days. I have days where I think, I don't get it. Like, I don't know why anybody would want the job of human. You know, I, if, if I get checked out right now, right here, totally fine, which is, you know, a weird place to be, but it certainly crossed my mind before. But then like today, before this, I was walking um, along the beach uh, cliff here 
And I, out of the corner of my eye, I caught a lizard staring out into the water. And I watched that lizard watching the ocean. And I, I tried to sort of rock my head around what that lizard must have been thinking, you know, as he was taking it all in. And I was just thinking, wow, man, if I weren't here, I would have missed that. You know, it's just little things like that. So I'm very thankful for every experience I've had, for sure. I've had shitty ones too, that I think in the moment, this is the worst thing ever, but I know that they've just added to who I am. I don't know who I'd be if I'd had a totally different upbringing or experience or all the people that have done me wrong had not done those things. But yeah, I don't know. I think there comes a time in your life where you sort of look at the good and the bad. It's is equal they're bedfellows you know yeah yeah just sort of part of the fabric right <laughs> part of the fabric yeah it's part of we are again we're made up of all those experiences and each one of those things serve us even if they seem horrific at the time when we're going through them they're serving us somehow i don't know yeah. i don't pretend to understand the way that the universe works or if there is a god the way God works, but I do believe that we are here uh, to, to, A, to remember who we are and to love as best we are capable. Some of us figure out how to love more. Some of us are struggling with that, um, yeah. but I don't really see any other reason for being here. All the gobbledygook is in insignificance creating a computer. Great. That's cool. Writing a song. Great. That's cool. You know, doing all those things, that's all cool, but it doesn't really change the fact that we are here for each other to learn and grow into beautiful creatures uh, of love. And it sounds very like woo woo and stuff, but I do believe that. And I think that the folks that get caught up in sort of the lower strata of what it means to be a human, um, at least in my esteem, a lower strata that they forget, you know, they forget who they are and what's important. And that allows them to be cruel and treat other people with a lack of respect or just somehow think that what they know and feel is better than somebody else because of where they are socially or economically or and even intellectually, you know. I know. Again, I feel like I'm right. <laughs> You got me on a very philosophical day. It's good. I blame this the is, lizard. The I'm blaming king. the lizard. <laughs> the contemplative lizard. Do people want to ask questions? I don't yes. know. Actually, <laughs> it's all good. Um, would you, if you all would like to, I can remove the spotlight and we can all work together. So please do. Otherwise, I have questions as well. Yes. Uh, right. Anybody, everyone. Keep going. What was the first song? The first time you wrote a song. Can you the remember? The first song I ever wrote was called Let It Go, not the one from Frozen. Uh, and it was about a stalker and or the perspective of uh, a stalker, the woman talking about her stalker. And I think it was about six and a half minutes long. It's really long. And yeah, that was the, the first song I ever wrote. Wow. Yeah. Was it something that you had known personally? Was that something that you had just came up? No. No, it was just a story I was telling. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty serious. Is yeah. it something that you ever used later? I performed it back in the day when I first started performing. You know, I only had a few songs. Uh, a very lovely man by the name of Bill Pritchard. Uh, he, had, he had a place in West Seattle called uh, Madison's. And he had an open mic night that I had read about. And I had never performed out of a choir. I was... I grew up in a professional touring choir, but I had not done sort of a solo thing. Anyway, I had seen a notice for open mic night at this place. And uh, <laughs> I uh, asked my roommate at the time, this guy named Kurt, if he, because he played guitar, if he wanted to do a, write a song with me. And so we wrote a song and went and performed it. And uh, People enjoyed it. And the owner, Bill Pritchard, asked me to, you know, come back and do a show and that if people 
it would I wouldn't get paid, but I could keep my tips. But if people liked it and I was a success or whatever, that um <laughs> that uh he would have he would hire me for like an actual show show. And I was like, I only have the one song. <laughs> and he said, Well, you better get writing. And that really started my <laughs> write <career>. faster. <laughs> yeah. My mom had dared me to enter a songwriting competition. She called Ooh. me at work one day. I was managing, um, I was an insurance claims manager for a uh, marine, island marine, very large insurance company. Uh, it was such a weird job. But um, and she called me up one day. She had read about the Billboard songwriting contest and she basically double dog dared me. And I was like, I don't know how to write a song. She said, well, you've been writing poetry your whole life. And you know how to sing. So how hard could it be? And uh, so I wrote that song and uh, and the Let It Go song and with Kurt. And anyway, the rest is history. Pretty interesting. That's pretty great. Yeah. So I the show, the open mic went went, went well. I made lots of money and tips and uh, and Bill said, you're a hit. And I, from that point on, that was my place to perform. I got to play there every month and as a paying Neat. gig. And, it really started my career, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you find being dared really like motivates you to do things? <laughs> I think it is helpful. <laughs> I think somebody believing it's funny, you know, I have an interesting relationship with my mother and having her think that I could accomplish that was really interesting because she and I have had a very tumultuous relationship to say the least. And as I mentioned earlier that, you know, when will you be successful comment was not very nice, but uh yeah it's, it's it's fascinating i i think i am motivated by folks who have a tendency to uh not think i can do something although now that i'm older i think more people believe i can accomplish whatever i put my mind to you know well i'm pretty sure about it <laughs> <laughs> that comes with age but when you're younger you know that doubt that self-doubt man woof it's a hard one. Mm -hmm. How often do you grapple with that? Self-doubt? Like oh, I do I, daily, but. No, uh, yeah, on a pretty decent basis to the kind of self-doubt that isn't, can I do this? But sort of, a, this is going to sound so dark, but sort of more like, what's the point of doing this? Who cares? The world doesn't love beautiful things anymore. You know, they, they want yeah replicas of beautiful things or they want replicas to create replicas of beautiful things just talking about ai um which i mean i'm a big fan of the idea of ai i think it's cool but I, it's very stressful as a creative to think of what it means you know yeah yeah absolutely i don't know i mean i don't think that it's going to take the place of everything that we can do as creative humans but I, I think surface level, it's certainly people will use it in that way. Yeah. Well, they're already laying people off, right? Yep. Yeah. So that's a real bummer. Um, Robin Heller wanted to know, uh, has the need for income to survive affected your creative pursuits, if at all? Or how's it? Question. Um, I live pretty small, which is helpful. <laughs> but uh, every couple of years, I go back to what I would call a real job. Uh, and stockpile money um, and then have that, you know, and then sort of taper back a little bit on the creative world and then uh, come out of the gate with, you know, my pile of riches ha, ha, <laughs> from, from a corporate <laughs> America. But I'm miserable the whole time. I hate to say it, but I am. I'm just like, oh, God, kill me now. But, yeah. And I don't know. It's such an interesting thing. Do I live large? No. Do I have a fancy car? No. Do I, you know, but I don't need anything. I'm, I don't feel like I need anything. And I think once you get to that point in your life, it's, it's a lot easier to navigate. Now the outside world thrusts things upon you, like California rent, for example. Yeah. But I live in a rent control place, but um, I do wish that there were better better ways to to make a living as a creator. I, I do wish that it was supported more to be creative. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, you know, because we live a creative life. Yeah, 
I, and, and a lot of time it's a balancing act. So most of the people that I know do a balance between what will pay the best and yeah. what will bring the life that will work the best for them. And that also can be an issue with health concerns. And, you know, there's so many other th factors to throw into that mix. Yeah, so, I have health insurance because I, I have to because I have Murphy yeah. and celiac and stuff. But, um, you know, I do, have a, as Liam Neeson would say, have a special set of skills. And as such, I can be hired. Um, people do hire me to think outside of the box for them. I get hired as a consultant on things. Mm. Uh, and that's that really helps pad stuff got it too yeah um yeah. trevor wanted to ask um have you done any sort of cross media with your work say painting a song or incorporating your writing into your art and if not have you considered doing that like a multimedia gallery show it's definitely something i would love to do trevor, that'd be so I'm cool sure. yeah uh, i had a dream once years and years ago in the and i still remember like it was yesterday in the dream I walk into, I, I'm having a show at the dream. It's in the future. Every, everything is white. Like the furniture is white. The walls are all white and they have these little, you know, cool lights and my artwork is up. And there's also uh, multimedia stuff, TVs, and my music is playing through the place and people are walking around and they're taking it all in and experiencing it. That was a really cool dream. And I would love to do that. Uh, I have that sounds that neat. Although I did have a year for one year and certain people out there now who have those paintings uh, on the back of every painting when it was done, I wrote a poem inspired by the painting. Uh, and so some paintings of mine out there have a poem on the back, um, which is kind of fun. But yeah, it's a great question. The answer is I would love to do that for sure. I mean, that's why I met uh, uh, Trevor a while back and we have mutual friends that th at the time had the Hellmel gallery I don't even know if Hellmel is still going on but I thought oh this would be a perfect gallery for me to to do stuff in and then the pandemic happened so I never got to to do that but uh, yeah so much yeah but not but to I mean, say at all that, that and, you know, I would love to do that how cool would that be I, it would be it would be incredible but I think that would be fabulous yeah but then you well, think like, would anybody come? I don't know. Probably maybe a couple of people. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Well, if you want to talk about this, I think we could do a collaborative show and be super fun. That would be super fun. Yeah. Right. Well, I um, have my my people call your people. <laughs> you know, my people exactly. are your people. <laughs> my, I think I think yes, that's what how that works. But that's if you're willing to collaborate, I found a lot of things um get much more open. Mm, yeah. I've done shows with other artists for sure. And that's always a lot of fun. Uh, and once, just because I thought, why can't I, I, I opened my own gallery in tennis in Nashville. Neat. So then I was like, yeah, let's do this. So I opened a little gallery and basically I slept in the back room and made the rest of the place a gallery and I put on shows and that was really cool. That's really neat. Yeah, that's fun. But was there anything in particular that you were like, this is the kind of gallery we are or? No, I just showed my work and put out wine and snacks and people came and looked at art and some people bought stuff and it was just cool. I don't know. <laughs> it's great. And yeah. you know, snacks. snacks. Everyone likes snacks. Come snacks on. Snacks and wine are really definitely the thing that people get excited about when it comes to when it comes to looking at artwork. Yeah, that help <laughs> that always helps. It helps it sells it. Yeah. It helps with song too. I'm, yeah. I'm sure it probably helps with films. Yeah, I would like to perform out here as well too, but um, I haven't really, I haven't really, I've been concentrating on other things. So, <gasps> David Tavica. Oh my goodness. Hi, David. Hi. Jamie and David. That means Jamie and David are watching. Friends of mine. Yay. Hi, girl. Hello. So, for anybody who just came in later, I can send you recording links to this afterwards. So, you won't have missed out all good yeah all good yay no yay. thank you this will be great oh no i mean what are there other types of things that you're like this this is something i really want to create then yeah i mean i have a lot of ideas of things i want to do obviously i'm working on a feature right now so that's exciting and uh and i'll direct that um i want to open a, a bookstore when i'm old lady i want to do that 
Um, Neat. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I'm, like I said, I don't do a lot of future casting. I, I'm pretty good at being in the moment. Right now, I feel I'm in my screenwriter phase and I'm digging it. I felt so just in the right place at the right time when I was directing my film, you know, a little while yeah. ago. And it felt so right and so good and exciting. And I'm excited to do more of that. Neat. I, so the whole process of directing and writing and producing it was just Fabulous. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it encompasses all the things that I enjoy doing, storytelling, it's art, it's visual, it's, it's you know, you can hear uh, what's going on, sort of the subtext, that's, that's subtext is a big deal to me. Um, the space in between stuff that mm. isn't being said, I love that. It just, it, it was all the things rolled into one and I really, really enjoyed it no that's wonderful yeah. it's so fun yeah that oh that's great i was saying oh intense human interactions yeah i mean that it, it's sort of intensified a version of that that's what the, the sort of you mean uh, the film itself yeah or, yeah definitely that's the other thing too is it gets my the part of my brain that loves neuroscience and philosophy and psychology because you're creating these characters that have to live in their own world that are reflexive of the, the, the real life, but are in their own moments. And you can play in genre and time period. Mm. Uh, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. Those stories. No, that's actually a great one. And just, I do know that the whole, I don't know, uh, because I've worked on set many times, it's yeah. the, that's also its own intense human interaction interspersed with watching paint dry literally <laughs> well as a for you as a, a person that is a costumer and 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 so talented uh, that you, thank you uh, in my humble opinion i believe that the costume is also a character and so right when you're creating yeah. those things you you're creating such an important part of the story thank you and i just mean that being on there and in there in the production period is also an intense human interaction oh. like just oh, creating no. anything yeah um it's a juggling act for sure there were 35 people on my on my dang jamie, jamie was there he's awesome <laughs> but yeah there there was it was an exciting time and stressful i mean it's expensive i had to raise money and i had to put up money and you know but every time i used that credit card i thought to myself like okay susan well this is this is expensive and you're putting your own money into this and other people are putting their believing in you and putting their money into it and it's super stressful to think about that but uh but also i mean why not do this thing you know yeah i've, I've got to say <laughs> you know, i'm having funded several of my own things yeah and, and parts of that there are all kinds of silly things i could be spending my money on Sure. I'm choosing to do this. Yeah. And again, if you don't live very large, I mean, I've made four records and uh, those aren't cheap. Nope. You know, I'm working on an EP right now that's taking really long time because it costs money and it costs time. And I, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. But I've said this on so many different shows. People say, well, you know, what's it like to be a creative? I said, well, being a creative it's in you so deeply that you can't not be it and my friends who were in the creative fields who then quit and went on to do things like have families or have quote unquote real jobs stuff like that um I was like tell me your secret what's the secret to not doing this because it's so it's so in my blood that I cannot imagine not I can like I said, when I've gone to do normal jobs for a couple of years, just to stockpile finances, misery. It's not, it's not like it's because I can't do the job. It's because I can do it. And then what? And so you figure it out in the first couple of days and then you just, oh God, it's just misery. Cause you're not able to create the way you normally would. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't have any of the answers. It's all good. David is saying you're buying happiness for other people. With buying 
for other people. But you're buying it with your credit card and on your film, you're buying happiness for other people. Well, I suppose if they enjoy it when they watch it, yes. Although <laughs> yes. the really cool thing is, I have to say about my creative community and my family and everybody is that when I said, I'm going to make this movie, um, people were so excited and so loving and so supportive. And it was really beautiful and lovely to feel like they trusted that that I would do my best to make something beautiful. And that's a really cool feeling, you know? Absolute faith in you. Yeah. That you will totally do that. Well, you've also, you have proved this again and again and again. So. Yeah, I, but I've never been, I mean, you know, I never direct them. It's just, it's that thing. It's my dad says never do anything for the first time. And I, I always love that expression because. Basically <laughs> like how do you do that <laughs> yeah you pretend like you've done it a million times before so that you're willing to just leap I've definitely always been someone that leaps and then figures it out as I go somebody says can you do this yes I can how do I do, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean you just yeah you jump in that's what life is, is all about you figure it out or you don't and if you if you if the plane is going down in a big circle and you're like, all you can think of is like, you know what? I fucking tried. I tried. And yeah. that's, again, it's the journey. It's not Ithaca. It's the journey to Ithaca. It's all the stuff we get along the way. Because once you get to Ithaca, you're like, yeah, I'm in Ithaca. <laughs> the first time I went to the Grand Canyon, I was like, that's a pretty big hole. But I didn't know, like, <laughs> I've heard it was built up so much. And then I got there. I was like, I, was, I mean, I it's pretty, it's, it's pretty. a big hole. It's a big hole. And then it's like, all right, let's go. And then, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I found that with a lot of things because I am much less of a tourist than wanting to go to places to do something, you know, yeah. Yeah. but um, you'll find you'll find something everywhere if you if you're willing to look i think wherever you go there you are and wherever <laughs> you look that's what you'll see i mean that's right yeah absolutely do you want to show off your painting behind you oh sure this is called the cocktail party um Ooh. I I get a good image of it Ooh. this was one of the very first paintings i ever painted neat and uh so it was in it. Oh, there's better. Oh, nope. See, the light keeps going because I'm next to a window. Okay. The Ooh. faux pas of um, doing these sorts of things. But <clears throat> when I, I painted that, it was one of the first ones I ever painted. And it was in a restaurant in Nashville. My friends owned a restaurant. And they're like, oh, can we use some of your artwork? And I got a phone call from this woman. She had seen the, the piece in the restaurant. And this is one of my favorite pieces that I'd ever done for whatever reason. It just speaks to me. And she said, Oh, I'm interested in buying your painting. And I said, Oh, okay. And I was like, fuck, I don't want to sell it. So I threw out an outrageous number and thought, you know what? If she says, okay, I would be crazy not to take it. But I threw out that outrageous number and she said, Oh, that's a little steep for me. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way. Yeah. I did. I sold the very first painting I ever painted. And I regret, I regret that. Oh, I wish I still had it. Um, but you know, it, it's okay. I have it in here and I have a photo of it. So neat. What was it? What was it? Yeah. If you don't mind. I mean, it's abstract. I would say it's called, uh, <laughs> it was called the first also. I seem to have a thing. Well, look at that. <laughs> I know, but it was the first painting. So, and it is, I would say it's akin to a bouquet of flowers. Probably. Nice. But it's not, but it is. It's all, if you want to look at it, it's somewhere on my SusanRuth.com website. I'm okay. Vivid gallery, but yeah. And for people who don't know, you can go to SusanRuth.com and the Hey Human podcast and find all of that. And what was the other podcast? Uh, see, I have uh, SusanRuth.com. I have HeyHumanPodcast.com. And then if you, you, you can go to Are We There Yet podcast show. I think that's the web address, but if you just go to YouTube and, and, are we there yet? We and you'll find yet. it. It's, it's called Are We There Yet podcast show because there was about 4 billion Are We There Yet. But if you do that whole shenanigans, you'll find it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, will, I will send those links along to everyone who's getting the recording link as well. So Thank you. we'll all get that. Yay. Yay. Oh. 
Are there any know. other questions from anybody? There's a lot in the chats. I don't know if that was just common. I, I think I think I caught everything. Let me double check. Da, 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 da. Trevor, I know you got a question or two in there. <laughs> well, he was asking about the cross media with the yeah, painting and the such writing. A good with, idea. I, I think that's an amazing that. one. Yeah. It's a great idea. Hmm. I think this is grand. Okay. Uh, Yay. Thank you so much. I, by the way, love talking to you, and I would just do that anyway. So this and by is. By the way, Laura Brody was on my podcast on Hitting yes. Podcast not too long ago, and you Wait. can hear her talk about how awesome and fantastic she is. Wow! Thank you so much. That was super fun, honestly. And like swapping things back and forth, and I don't know, storied lives. <laughs> storied lives for sure. Yeah. Well, you gotta walk through those fires right you know yeah. and sometimes without that well i mean it's not like we all need that in order to become the people we are to be but i don't know how else you get there from here yeah. right i like my bacon extra crispy oh nice oh david said she had he that you were on his show too oh you were on oh that's true david, oh, right. yeah dr david tubica brilliant surgeon photographer artiste creative human uh from chicago lives in chicago uh he was on i think it was about two and a half years ago i want to say Dr. very Dave cool Publica, excellent interview very good yeah awesome very, very and trevor good. was also on there too trevor was on there too he's a paleontologist <laughs> he's amazing yay yay yes david <laughs> said he's still reverberating yay <laughs> Yes. I, you know what here's the the wild thing is is as topsy-turvy as this life can be and it can be i the some of the folks i've met just like david's a great example i met david through other friends in random he had randomly come to seattle to uh, watch a show a music show i was sharing the bill with performing he was there with uh someone that worked with him worked for him and we hit it off and have been friends ever since trevor and i met and completely hit it off and been friends ever since we met at a pinball party of all things <laughs> it's, just, it's wild where you meet people but i feel so jamie is another example i met jamie through david it's like you meet people and you think oh oh there you are you married my cousin but you laura are are you and I have always just clicked yeah. for whatever reason. And I do feel that I have been very lucky that some beautiful, loving, open-hearted, wonderfully brilliant people have come into my life and that I yeah. wasn't so asleep that I didn't recognize it is also wonderful. You know, it's like, oh, there you are. Oh, there you are, you know? So that's Come on, let's visit together. Yeah. Be the lizard. Be the lizard, the lizard. contemplate. <laughs> those of you coming late, you'll know what that means when you watch the replay. Yes, the, the lizard contemplating this, the ocean and the, the universe. Ocean. That's right. That's what we do. That's right. Aww. Thank you so much. This is lovely. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And again, I will send out links to everybody. Thank you for joining Genius Tea Time.